Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Kate. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. It, it is a Shabbat. We thank you so much for hanging out with us. We thank you for joining us on today, one of Yah's greatest days, the, the day of rest. And this is the day that has been given to man. And it is a day that is, it is, is a holy day. And so we are in the middle of a holy appointed time as well. And so it's not only just a Shabbat, but it is a holy time inside of the Shabbat. We are on the day three of our Feast of Unleavened Bread. And we are in the days of our Messiah raising up from the, from the grave. This is, uh, we are on the third day. And, you know, there's a little speculation. Some people are, they, it, 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 even us, we don't know whether he was raised on the first day, Sunday, or whether it was this morning. Um, but he, we know that our Messiah has been raised. We know that our King lives. We know that we have a perfect Melchizedek priest who has come and has delivered the perfect walk into the Torah. And for those who do not know who we are and what we represent, we represent the, the, the Torah. We, we, us as people don't represent it, but this is what us as a family love to represent is the Torah. We love the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator that are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. 
th within those laws, statutes, and commandments, we can find the kingdom road. We can find the gift of life. We can find the heart and the desire and the, the way that our creator wants us to live and the way he wants us to breathe and the way he wants us to worship and the way he wants us to behave. And all of these things are things that the world has rejected. Because when you say that the law, statutes, and commandments of our creator are no good, or that they've been fulfilled to where we don't need to do them anymore, or that they're just some old things that are nailed to the cross. Well, then you're forgetting about all the blessings that come with this, and you're forgetting about the lifestyle that completely changes us from the way the world looks into something that our creator wants us to live by. And so those are the ways and the teachings that we are trying to teach others with, and we thank you guys very, very much for joining us. Family here at the table, how are you guys doing? Good. good. Everyone good? Everyone uh, alive still? Yep. Cade, why don't you open us with a word of prayer, please? Personally, Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your Shabbat, and we thank you for the people you have put in, around with us today to read your word, to learn, to find your commands, and find your great teachings you have taught us. I thank you for your feast, and I thank you for your son, that he was willing to sacrifice himself to save us from death, that he was willing to take away all the sin from us, that we can have eternal life, that we can reign with you in the kingdom to come. Like I said, this word is blessed, that your ministry is blessed, that everything that we do here is blessed by you, and that the people that, and us that we learn from this, that we take from this, and that your blessings are upon us in everything that we do. In Joshua's name, amen. Amen. Okay, all right, so let us begin with a little bit of a blessing. First blessing that I would like to bless you all with, or actually it's not even a blessing, this is more of a, uh, it's a, it's a statement. It's, a, it's more of a mission statement from our creator. Um, it, and it's, it's more than that, but it's, it, this is where we begin. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down, when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. And ye, you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. Guys, this is what we are supposed to do. This is what we are told to do because our creator is one. And a lot of people don't understand what that means. A lot of people have our Messiah, who people call Jesus the Christ. They believe that he is our, our creator. And we've mixed in ideologies and man-made doctrines. And we do, the world doesn't know who our Messiah is or who the creator is. But... Our creator is one. Our Messiah is one. They are not the same. It, this, the Messiah is the son of the most high. And that will actually make people's ears turn red and will make them get very angry when they hear things of that nature because we've all been taken in and had man-made doctrines embedded into our lives ever since we were children. We don't know what we believe because we do not read the scriptures for ourselves. But when we read the scriptures for ourselves, it becomes very clear who our creator is and who the son is. And when the creator says he is one, he is definitely one. Okay, who do we have going into the, uh, who, who do we got to say hi to? We have Cindy LJ. Cindy, how's Cindy? And is Ollie back yet? Not yet, she's gonna go see him here a little bit. Okay, good, 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 good. We have Emissary Belhim. What's and, up, brother? And Yami, his daughter. Hi. Uh, Yami, how are you doing, little sis? Sylvia. Mrs. Ewards. Much love, Sylvia. The, the Slaggers, Zachariah. Oh, it's the Slaggers. Damon. All right. Family's here. Everybody's here. What's up, little Damon and Slaggers and everyone? And then we got our dogs. Oh, we're sorry, sorry about that. Um, and we have Dreg. Uh, Dreg's in. Much and love, brother. Tam. Okay. Tam? Yeah. I don't know who Tam is. I'm just, we're super sorry. I'm not why sure the dogs are going a little crazy here. Um, let's get going on this. Go ahead and take them outside. Let's go around the round table. Okay, so what we're going to do, what we do every single Shabbat, is we go through the laws, statutes, and commandments. Good. Good, you're doing good, Damon D. Uh, yeah, and so we are doing the laws, statutes, and commandments, and for those who do not know what the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator are, we're just about to go through them. They are things that we have forsaken. They are things that People have tossed into the trash, and as we go around, if anyone has any questions or if any of these laws don't make sense to you, we are absolutely happy to expand on them and go over them. And so this is what we do every Shabbat, is we go through these, and they are, um, they're beautiful, they're, they're blessings things. So the very first one is 
be fruitful. Number two is multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. The herb and every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean wound that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat blood. Walk before me and be perfect. You are Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children. I just wait, wait, wait. Teach, teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the feast of unleavened bread, Matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrew. Saying to file firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven image. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. Keep the Shabbat. Honor, Honor your, your parents. parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from a rock that a tool has touched. Do, Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If uh, a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yeah, who has laws for criminals? Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifice to other Elohim. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do no, not follow do, a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle who find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress the stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat and his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends he for you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim outside it, with outsiders of the land. Do not make or use his anointing oil on a normal person. Do not make or use his perfume on a normal person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for a wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. Do not sacrifice children of Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your fields, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not divert your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself with the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. And let's let's stop real quick and write this one. Because we are in the manners of the nation right now. I don't know, when are they celebrating Easter? I don't even know when that is. Today. Is yeah. that today or Sunday? So at some point, since we don't even know, we're actually so set apart, We I don't even know when the actual world is celebrating Easter. But when we get into a pagan holiday, if you believe that you're getting your bunnies out and you're getting having little eggs and you're having your kids at church go around looking for um, Easter eggs and it's it's glorifying our creator and glorifying his son, that's not it. It's absolutely not it at all. In fact, I would have to say that if you think of that, then you are tr terribly mistaken because we've been told not to keep, we, we, we are told to stay away from the world stuff. We're told not to, to be part of uh, pagan holidays. When you say the word Easter, you're actually mentioning a pagan name, Istar. You're talking about a, a Roman fertility goddess. And when you look at the what they actually did over Istar, it's vile, it's very creepy, it's very nasty. And these people, they, they, they have their kids dressing up as uh, bunnies and uh, the, the Easter bunny comes to every house and will give them eggs and chocolate and candy and nothing is glorifying our creator. There is absolutely zero to it. And you can dress up and your heart, you, you can think that your heart is in the right spot or you can say to yourself, well, you know, it's, it's what I think. And, you know, our creator, I'm, I'm glorifying our creator. You're not. Our creator has a set of guidelines and a set of ways that he has told us to act and to behave. And if you're out there with the Easter bunny hanging out with the pagans, um, this isn't this isn't doing it. And you are walking in the manners of the nations when you when you do any of this. Anytime you celebrate any of these pagan holidays or do this kind of stuff, it's pagan. And you don't want to be a pagan. Okay, 95. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot and the Omer count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Terah. Keep, Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shemni Atzeret. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. 
Confess your sins, Yahuwah, and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazir. Wear tzitzit on the four corners of your garments. The laws of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. The Torah of keeping your oath, Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Guard, Guard your, your soul. soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You, you shall, shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon you, the, your hand and the frontlets between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Creep. Creep Yahuwah. Okay, if you guys start it up and you guys both say it, just keep going. Let's get yeah. some stereo in on it. everybody's name. Okay, destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Okay, and there, there's, there's a big one right there. A lot of this will, you know, commandment 124, do not do what is right in your own eyes. This is a really, um, this is one we can all get in a tremendous amount of trouble with. Um, what we think is right in our own eyes is obviously not going to be right in the eyes of our creator. The eyes of our creator, it is hard to understand exactly what his qualities are, but his qualities are not us. He is holy, he is righteous, he is clean, he is perfect in every way. And we have to understand that, that we are not. And so a lot of times when we go vigilante on things, it's not what our creator wants us to do. We're doing what is right in our own eyes. And what is that is obviously a commandment, is we have to do what is right in the eyes of our creator. That's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter what the world thinks of us. It matters what our creator thinks of us. And the world will pass away. This world is going to disappear. All this foulness, all this evil, all of this horribleness will pass away. Every bit of the evil is going to crescendo. It's going to get to the top. And Messiah is going to come back. And he's going to deal with all of this. It's, it's going to change. But we have to be doing what is right in the eyes of our creator. And anything outside of that, anything to the norm, you're going, you're stepping to the left, you're stepping to the right. And we're not told not to go to the left or the right. We need to maintain the right way forward, which is the Torah, which means the right way forward. If, if you guys are keeping the Torah, one of the definitions of the Torah is the way forward. And so without that, we don't have the way forward. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall not give to a stranger a cling food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asheroth poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Our God of the prophet who has chosen. Prophet has to do it on him. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How do you deal with false witness among tour keepers? The first child is to get double portion. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. And we have a an epidemic of mass proportions across the world right now where this is the new norm, right? This is absolutely the new norm. They've been pushing it since I was a kid. Now it's mainstream. Now it's like guys are women, women are guys. They're teaching the little children in schools to be cross-dressers and transvestites. And if you're looking at some of the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, when you look at that, it's always about a, a lust. It's always about that evil passion, always about that evil stuff. And now we live in a world where you they, they force you to accept this kind of wickedness, right? And, and it, you know this is why our creator has a set of guidelines because when we cross them, we have to understand that, hey, we're crossing them. When we see others cross them, we got to understand this is why we must be separated from this world. We got to keep a stand and we have to be pure in the eyes of our creator. And if you're a guy that's putting on lipstick and a wig and putting on high heels and going out and thinking you're a chick, that's totally wrong. So let's continue on. 145. If you find a nest, bird's nest with a mother and the, and the babies or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof as you lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. The laws of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing to be forced inside if that was his pledge. Do not praise his hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back to the forgotten sheep. Leave it, leave it for the stranger, fatherless and widow. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. 
Okay, all right, everybody. That is some of the awesomest things that we could ever hear. And they're probably awesome things that we should probably hear every single day of our lives as we uh, try to get closer to our creator. All right, um, anything going on in the chat room? Um, we have a guy in there that's speaking Spanish, so Jaden's yeah, Jade Jade speaking. Talking. Okay, all right, good. All right, so here we are, guys. We are into Genesis right now. Eli, do the split screen for me on this, this thing. We're on a new device here. Um, let's see if we can figure this out. Maybe. And handy dandy split screen. There it is. Okay. Yeah, this is a little bit slower, a little bit of clunkier, but you would think it'd be a little faster. There we go. All right. So I guess my old tablet's a little bit better. But anyway, thanks for holding in with us, guys. And we have this pulled up right here. Okay. Now, here we go, guys. We are into um, the Targums at the top. For those who have never heard this, we're simply reading through Genesis. We're reading through the Torah. And um, so this is where the top part of that is the Targums, which is yet another translation. And there's a lot of different translations of the, of, of the scriptures. The Targums is one, and a lot of people think this has to do with um, Talmudic stuff, and it actually doesn't. It, it has nothing to do with, with Talmud at whatsoever or any of that stuff. And if you actually go out and read some of the stuff in the Talmud, it is completely different than the kind of stuff you see here. So let's begin, and here we go. And Jacob went on his way, and the messengers of Elohim met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is the camp of Elohim. And he called the name of that place Machaniam. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the field of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Say this to my master Esau. Your servant Jacob said this, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have bulls and donkeys and flocks and male and female servants and i have sent them i have sent to inform my master to find favor in your eyes okay why is why is he doing what is why is he doing what he is doing here exactly kate are you with me here I'm just going to have him do the check because Jay's got to go like word it in. Okay. So let's, uh, yeah, we'll have to, the Spanish guy will have to hold on for a second here. Um, why, why is he doing this? Why is he sending all of this stuff to his brothers? Uh, basically, like it's a gift, like a bribe so he doesn't get hurt by Esau. Yeah. And so he's trying to make amends with him and um, he doesn't know exactly what is happening. We know from other um, accounts, we know from the book of Jasher that when he was going to meet him, there was, a, there was a whole bunch of stuff prior to this. And there were, um, there were a, a, some angels and they had basically made it look like an entire army was going and it, they were running by Esau. And every time they ran by Esau, they were like, they're like my master Jacob. And they're like, the only reason we're keeping you alive is because our master, you know, our master Jacob. And so there was like two or three sets of these huge armies that Esau saw prior to them ever meeting. So they, Esau thought, Jacob was like some king and he had like forces, massive amounts of forces. And so even though Esau was on his way to kill Jacob, and that was actually due to Laban, because after Laban left, Laban sent all of his kids over to Esau to try to get him killed. So Esau or Laban made this pact with Jacob and immediately, the, probably within, the, within that same hour, he broke that pact and he left while he sent his kids off to try to get Jacob killed. Okay, so here we are. Seven, I think, and it just spun up there. Sorry, guys. And Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. So he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and herds and camels into two groups. And he said, if Esau comes to the one group and attacks it, then the other group, which is left, shall escape. And Jacob said, O of my father Abraham and Elohim, my father Yitchak, who said to me, return to your land and to your relatives, and I do good to you. Now, is Abraham anything funky in this? Uh, funky B. Shouldn't it be in this? Yeah, yeah. it's a funky B. Okay, so we missed that. Chapter 9. We didn't get it. I don't know if I've got any fixes off of them. So I'll probably... Okay. Ch 9 needs a fix. Okay. I do not deserve the least of all kinds of acts and all the truth which you have shown your servant. For I have passed over this Yardine with my staff and now groups. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he shall he come and shall smite me and the mother with the children. Okay, up to the top? Yep. Okay. And so for some reason, they never gave me the option of scroll mode, so it's in the book mode. Okay, so we're gonna have to scroll to the right. Okay, so guys, we're reading from the Targums, which again is just a different translation. And Jacob went on his way, and the messenger of Yahuwah met him. And Jacob said, when he saw them, these are not the host of Esau who are coming to meet me, 
nor the host of Laban, who have returned from pursuing me, but they are the host of the holy messengers who are sent from before Yahuwah. Therefore, the name of that place he called in the language, the sanctuary, Machinium. And then the other, this is a, when it says Jerusalem, guys, it's just a, yet another translation of the Targums. And Jacob, when he beheld them, said, perhaps they are a host from Laban, the brother of my mother, coming to set against me the array of battle to slay me, or rather, they are a host of the holy messengers from before Yahuwah, who are come to save me from their hands. And he called the name of that place, Machinism. Okay. It's still up here. So why do we have this thing it's right It's like here? a different section. I don't know. The term has like different sections. So. Okay. So we're continuing on. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Gabala, the territory of the Edomites, and instructed them to say, Thus shall you speak to my lord Esau. Thus saith thy servant Jacob, With Laban have I dwelt and have tarried until now. And of all that in which my father blessed me, there is nothing in my hand. But I have a few oxen and donkeys, sheep and servants and handmaids, and I have sent to tell my Lord that that, that blessing hath not profited me, that I may find mercy in thine eyes, and that thou mayest not obtain enmity against me on account of thereof. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother, to Esau, and he also cometh to meet thee, and four hundred chief warriors with him. And the four hundred men, warlike leaders, were with him in the other translation. And Jacob was greatly afraid. Because for 20 years he had not been mindful of the glory of his father, and he had anxiety. And he divided the people who were with him, the sheep and oxen and camels, into three troops for a portion to Leah and a portion to Rachel. And he said, if Esau come to the one troop of them and smite it, the remaining troop may escape. Okay. Okay, let's continue on. Jade, can you get sit down real quick, please? Sorry, guys. We're dealing with dogs and trying to deal with all sorts of stuff. It's just crazy in this house. Okay, where are we at? Uh, I think 13. Okay. Right, you're on 12. Let's talk about this. So what do we have going on, Cade? Tell us okay. what's happening to this point. So basically we have, like, Jacob, right? He's afraid. He's very scared of his brother. He's He needs to basically find a way to not get killed. So he separates the families into two. He separates them. So in case one gets attacked, another family lives through and lose everything all in one sweep from Esau. So basically he's trying to figure this out. He's praying to Yah, sending messengers to his brother saying, hey, the blessing didn't do anything for me. I... I've got nothing from it, so you shouldn't be angry with me. Um, Why is he back? Why is Jacob back? He's trying to cross over the land to his father. He's trying to go to his father. But why place. did he decide to go back? Why Why? Why now? Yeah, I told him to go back. Yeah, okay. I said, go back to your land of your fathers. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. So this is it. Verse 12 on the uh, scriptures at the bottom. For you said, I shall certainly do good to you and shall make your seed as the sand of the sea, which are too numerous to count. And he spent the night there and took what came to his hand as a present for Esau, his brother. And then we have a typo here. Who is it? What is it supposed to be in 14? It's 200. Yeah, 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams. Sorry, guys. 30 milk camels for their with their colts, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 foals. Okay, so he has he's loaded with this stuff. And he gave into the hand of his servants every drove by itself and said to his servants, pass over before me and put some distance between drove and drove. And he commanded the first one, saying, When Esau, my brother, meet you and ask you, saying, To whom do you belong, and where are you going, and whose are these in front of you? Then you shall say, They are your servant Jacob's. It is a present sent to my master Esau. And see, he also he's also behind us. I'm sorry, guys. The typos are so bad in this chapter. It's terrible. I, I can't even read this thing. <clears throat> sorry. We will get this fixed next Shabbat. I promise. Okay, so he commanded the second and the third and all who followed the droves, saying, Speak to Esau this same word when you find him, and you shall say, Also look, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, Let me appease him with the present that goes before me, and after that see his face. He might accept me. So I think here they're, they're separate. Like, there's a few days separation between them, between Jacob and the messenger. I think he sends one, a couple days later. I think there's enough distance between them. It's going to take a few days. Hopefully he, he hope Esau is calm by the time Jacob gets there. Yeah. Um, and, and so there's a tremendous amount of stuff. This isn't a one-day thing. This is, like you said, this is a many-day pro procession and things that are happening. And he has enough stuff. If you're driving stuff into two different groups, you're gonna have you're you're gonna be like a ways down the road, right? You're not gonna have two different groups right next to each other because they you know the whole plan was, if one gets slaughtered, then at least right, somebody else have will be some up. family. And he uh, say he put uh, Rachel and Joseph Benjamin 
or I guess Benjamin wasn't born yet, was he? Yeah, just... No. So yes, Joseph. So he's Joseph and Rachel together. So the day he, he said the most, he loved Rachel the most. Yeah, and so this is interesting. You know, he's uh, essentially half the family. He's okay, you know. It's like it's okay because he's slaughtered some other family. Well, it's like he put the the his finest, what he considers his finest, in the back. Okay. okay. Last verse down here. Then. Okay. Last verse twenty one. And the present passed over before him, but he himself spent the night in the camp. Okay. Now heading back. Yeah, and Jacob. Heading back up to the top. Very bottom line of that. And Jacob said, Elohim of my father Abraham, thou, the Elohim of my father Isaac, Yahuwah, who saidest to me, return to thy country and to thy kindred, and I will do thee good. I am altogether less than any of the goodness and truth which thou hast exercised towards thy servant. For with my staff alone, I passed this Jardina, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my elder brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, for he hath been mindful of the glory of his father, lest he come and smite the mother with, with the children. But thou hast promised, I will surely do thee good, and will make thy sons as many as the sand of the sea be numbered, for that cannot be numbered for multitude. And he abode there that night, and he took what was ready for at his hand, a present for Esau his brother, she goats two hundred, and he goats twenty, ewes two hundred and two hundred and rams twenty, milch camels their young ones 30 cows 40 bulls 10 small colts 10 and then uh he says the other version of that says uh where'd i go right go to the right yeah. the other version of that says uh arid small i guess small horses it seems like a guilt like he's really guilty of the whole thing he's like please don't smoke here try to try to cool well, down yeah absolutely i mean he knew he left when he left his brother was, was about on, to kill him. They were on very bad terms. Yeah, and that he, his mother made him leave. And so this is him, you know, 20 years later having to make uh, amends with all of this. Okay. And he made them ready by the hand of his servants and flocks apart and said to his servants, Pass over before me and put much room between flock and flock. And he instructed the first, saying, When Esau my brother shall meet thee and ask of thee, saying, Whose art thou and whither art thou journeying and whose are these before thee? Thou halt and sayeth, it is a gift of thy servant Jacob, which he sends to my Lord Esau. And behold, he also cometh after us. And so he instructed the second and the third and all who followed the flock, saying, according to these words, you must speak with Esau when you find him and say. And behold, thy servant Jacob also cometh after us. For he said, I will, I will make his countenance friendly by the gift which goeth before me. And afterward, we'll see his face. For adventure, he may accept me. So there's like 20 years of anger built up here, and he's yeah. hoping that uh, some camels can hit his appeasement. Well, this is what you call like a bribe, or you call an acceptance sacrifice, or a gift, something that, you know, appeasement. I mean, he's probably been really angry for 20 years, probably trying to find this guy. But... Yeah, or he has forgotten all about him and then moved on with his life. I don't think he would have. You don't think so? I don't think so. Why not? Because that was his, he lost what he was supposed to be his. But he took off with it. He had everything anyway. He took off with all his parents' stuff. He had droves. He has all that stuff regardless. I mean, he may not understand the, like, the, the real blessing of, of what he would have gotten, but um, I don't know. Time, time time changes everything. Okay, where are we at? Uh, you're almost done up here. All right, and we're at the top. And the present passed over before him, and he abode that night in camp. And the night in the camp, and he... That's okay, it. Okay, so I guess that's the end on that one. Okay, 22 at the bottom, folks. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two female servants and his 11 sons and passed over the ford of Jacob. And he took them and sent them over the stream and sent over what he had. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he did not overcome him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was dislocated as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I'm not letting you go until you have Barak me. So he asked him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name is no longer called Jacob, but Yisrael, because you have striven with Elohim and with men and have overcome. So okay. what do you got? What do you is got? this an angel or is that Elohim? Or... No, I don't think Elohim came down to wrestle. I don't know him. he said you're striven, with, you're striven with Elohim. Because because a messenger of Elohim is from Elohim, right? Well, yeah. The question is, how did this go down? Was he just hanging there? Some dude drove I, him into the bushes and decided he was going to fight him? Maybe he saw the guy and thought maybe he thought it was one of Esau's guys coming to overtake them or something in the nighttime. And so, it, so he decided like, who attacked to take who? Uh, they brought, I mean, probably Jacob probably started. How did this go down? I mean, you're not just go see some guy and decide Jacob, you're going to wrestle Jacob, the guy. Jacob, like, and, and what about wrestling? I mean, if this was a, if this was like one of these normal fights, somebody would whip out some, some iron, 
right? And start, I mean, if this was like some guy I that was mean, trying if, to if kill they had, him. If they had it on them. The who, yeah, who is going to wrestle? I don't think they're you're going to be walking around they're walking in these over, days. They're walking over a little past there, and Jacob just decides to like bum rush the dude. Yeah, or the guy bum rushes him, puts him in the ditch, push him in the, in the uh, bushes. I don't know, then he like touches his hip and just like falls out of place. Like, well, I don't think it's touching the hip. This is, this, is an, this is hours long. Like these guys went, did some Roman Greco wrestling, right? They they were sitting there doing some crazy stuff. And then he, Jake is strong enough to like the, the messenger can't leave because he's holding on to him. He's like either that or he's like but, didn't have all the power. Right? Or is the messenger playing around on this whole thing? Right? You have two messengers. One messenger that went into Sodom and destroyed absolutely just everything by himself. Yeah. And Maybe so, it's like a low ranked angel. Or I don't think it's a low ranked angel. I don't. I don't think that it's like a, it's when you play with a kitten, right? You're not gonna get. You're not gonna go swing the cat around, right? It's, it's it's not a big cat. It's a little. You play with you play with little things like that, and I think. That's what the the angel was doing, but it's very interesting. You know, I, I have no idea how the whole thing went up. How do you, how do you end up wrestling I, a I guy? Guess, yeah, how do you end up starting this? Like maybe maybe he was scared because he knew he saw coming. He's he, I mean, he's already freaking out. He's trying to pee him. Already giving him everything he has. I mean, so. it's, it, it's it seems to me just a very odd situation that you would. Uh, I mean, I can understand a fist fight. I can understand some sort of fight. Somebody's like trying to steal something from you. But how does how do they end up wrestling each other? What were the words? Prior to this, maybe there was no word. Maybe he just saw the guy and he freaked out because he saw someone in the camp. Maybe he thought he saw a spider you start or something. Fighting him or something. Yeah, maybe maybe try to like. Why, why take would you him say on. who are you? Why? What do you want from me? What are you uh, doing? Probably here? give him another chance to turn to Esau or something. Yeah, it's, it's a very very weird so, um, thing. So Jacob definitely knows him because he, he won't let him go until he blesses him. Right. He right. probably figures out like this isn't a normal guy. Right, or it's like I mean, he probably probably but he's probably roughly points that I can take normal. He's got on. the super jujitsu. Yeah. He knows he knows all the moves that nobody else knew. Okay. All right, we don't know. We're just we're just speculating with you. Okay, 29. 29. And Jacob asked him, saying, Please let me know your name. And he said, Why do you ask about my name? And he brought him there. Um, that was an interesting... Um, he didn't give his name. He didn't give him his name, um, but he blessed him. And he's, and he's just curious. I guess the angel was curious. Why do you want to know my name? Why do you think the angel wanted his name? Or why do you think Jacob wanted his name? Probably know who he was wrestling with. Like, or maybe, like, if, if he had a name. Yeah, and, like, two verses up, the angel asked him what his name was. All right? And he's like, hey, maybe, oh. Maybe it's just a mutual thing. Hey, what's your name? How are you? We've been name? fighting for hours on end. Let's get our name. Let's get the name, right? Yeah, so you have a conversation? Like, how are and you? I mean, and if his hip's dislocated, more than likely this dude, by the time his family sees him, he's probably got bleeding. He's probably bleeding. He's probably all jacked up. I mean, these guys are wrestling on the ground. For anyone that's ever been in a fist fight or been wrestling a guy on the ground, it's not a, it's not a gym mat, right? You don't end, you end up with scars and, and cuts all over you. You don't go to the ground gently. Um, you don't throw people to the ground gently. None of that stuff is gentle, and nothing out there would have been soft. So I'm guessing, more than likely, Jacob looks like he just got out of a, a gang fight or something, crawled out of a gang fight, and you know, he, if he was wrestling this guy for hours, he's not going to look good. That's the bottom line. Okay, 30. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen Elohim face to face, and my life is preserved. And the sun rose on him as he passed over Peniel, and he limped on his hip. That is why the children of Yisrael to this day do not eat the sinew of the hip which is on the socket of the thigh because he touched the, touched the socket of the thigh of Jacob in the sinew of the hip. Now, does he limp around for the rest of his life? Does he ever get this fixed? I don't think it ever mentions him like getting his hip back in place. No, but this is, uh, let's talk about this verse right here because this is a traditions of men right here, right? It says because of this encounter that the children of Yisrael do not eat the sinew of the hip. Now. What would the sinew of the hip? Do we have a Torah command on any of this? I, I don't think there's a thing. To say. Maybe maybe it's like maybe sinew is like is sinew like it's, fat. It's, it's not the fat. Sinew would be like a tendon, a muscle, um, or like a. I mean, there's no commands that don't eat muscle, don't eat tendon. I'm just things that don't eat fat. So is this a law of our Creator, or is this something that because of an incident that went down, people have continued I, on with traditions of men? I feel like since it's not commanded to us, we don't probably have to follow it. But I mean, they they did it for a reason. You know, they did it out of respect, probably. Probably, yeah, probably out of respect or probably, and that, that's how traditions end up, right? That's how we end up doing the things that we do. We don't know exactly why, but they come down from generations and we just end up doing them. And that's what Messiah was always talking about. He was always talking about these traditions of men and how they, they polluted everything. And um, they do traditions of men in the word of Elohim. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's what it is. And so that is what the world that we live in to today is that people would rather do traditions of, of men than the love of Elohim and the obedience. Okay, so with that, um, I don't, what else do we have we got, here? We have the top part. Oh, we have the top part, okay. I was about to close this out of here. Um, where are we at? I think we're on and heroes, yeah, and heroes. Okay, sorry guys, we're back in the targets, we're not quite done. And he arose in the night 
and took his two wives and his two concubines and 11 children and went over the ford jebeka and taking them he made them pass over the torrent and all that he had went over and jacob remained alone alone beyond the jebeka and an angel contended with him in the likeness of a man Okay, so there, there's a little something. An angel contended with him, right? So yeah, he may. He may so they got been. into an argument, or something happened that they uh, they got into something, right? So what was what was the contentment, right? Where and what like, was the question? Well, what well, set Jacob off? It was probably something to do. I think it's probably something to do with Esau. You know, he's already worried about Esau. He's already having issues as it is, trying to save his family, separating them, and he probably had to do something with Esau. Like they're talking about Esau or something. Or like. Jacob's pretty laid back. He he he's able to get uh, yeah, but, ripped off of his wife working seven years, and he he takes yeah, but, it extremely but he well. He could possibly lose his wife. Is the thing. How so? What do you mean? Because Esau is a uh, killer. Yeah, killer. killer. He's probably worried about losing. Like he wasn't going to lose Rachel forever for him for seven years, but he could possibly lose him forever. Esau comes here mad. Drake says maybe Jacob wanted the blessing for confirmation from heaven for the blessing he leveraged from Esau for a bowl of stew. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, and I mean, I guess that's one way. If you figured out that you're duking it out with an angel. Um, and the dude hasn't owned you. Maybe you can score a blessing out of the thing at the end. Um, but yeah, I interesting situation, right? Those are the questions that we, you know, one day we can sit down with uh, Grandpa, 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 Grandpa Jacob and ask him how that one went down. Um, what did he say to make you angry that you wanted to duke it out with the angel? Uh, maybe, Jacob? Hey, or maybe the, uh, the angel started with him. Maybe he said yeah, maybe he's rude. Thoughts on the floor. Well, he said he contended with him, and I, you know, that's one of those things. That how did it go down? You know, either you go up to a guy and you start pushing him around, and, and that's where it begins, or it's a verbal, and then all of a sudden, you know, you better shut your mouth or, you know, things are going to get real. You anger an angel enough to fight you. <laughs> yeah, that's probably going to be bad news, but, you know, this is this is an amazing story. Okay, well, with that, um, uh, I we think still we, oh, we still haven't finished. I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to get us out of here. Where are we at? And. My navigator's killing me. And he said, Hast thou not promised to give the tenth of all the thine that is thine? And behold, thou hast ten sons and one daughter. Nevertheless, thou hast not tithed them. Immediately he set apart the first, the four firstborn of the four mothers, and there remained eight. And he began to number from Shimeon, and Levi came up for the tenth. Michael answered and said, Lord of the world is thy lot. And on account of these things, he, Michael, remained from Elohim at the torrent till the calm of the morning was ascending. And he saw that he had not power to hurt him. <laughs> and he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was distorted in his contending with him. And he said, let me go for the calm of the morning ascendeth and the hour cometh when the messengers on high offer praise to Yahuwah of the world. And I am one of the messengers of praise. But from that day, but from the day that the world was created, my time to praise hath not come until now. And he said, I will not let thee go until that thou bless me. And the Jerusalem version of this says and the hollow of jacob's thigh was displaced and contending with him and he said send me away for the column of dawn ariseth and behold the hour cometh for the messengers to praise and he said i will not release thee until thou bless me and he said what is thy name he answered jacob and he said thy name shall no more be called jacob but israel because thou art magnified with the messengers of yahuwah and with the with the mighty and thou hast prevailed with them. And Jacob asked and said, Show me now thy name. And he said, Why dost thou ask for my name? And he blessed Jacob there. I can smoked on this. Sorry, guys. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For he said, I have seen the messengers of Yahuwah face to face, and my soul is saved. And the sun rose up upon him before his time, which is his account had set before his time. And his going out from Beersheba as he crossed over Peniel. And he began to journey and was lame upon his thigh. Therefore the sons of Israel eat not the sinew which shrank, which is in the hollow of the thigh of cattle and of wild animals until this day. Because the angel touched and laid hold of the hollow of the right thigh of Jacob in the place of the sinew, sinew which shrank. Okay, there's a lot of breakdown. All right, finally. I, I'm pulling out of that one. All now, right, so... Is, it, is that really Michael? Is that really Michael the archangel? Is it, is it Michael? Well, this is where the Jehovah's Witnesses, or is it the Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah, the Jehovah's Witnesses think Messiah is Michael, Michael yeah. right? That's Remember crazy. that? that they, they'll tell you that like 15 years ago. I don't know. I don't really get that because you know Michael, it doesn't talk a lot about Michael the archangel a lot in the Bible. Yeah, it does. It does you get a lot about Gabriel and sometimes other ones, but a lot, Gabriel mostly 
came up. And it's very clear in the scriptures, Michael is not the son of the Most High like this. There is a son, and his name is Yahushua. Oh, yeah. And uh, what does it say? Uh, like, is the angel realized that Jacob couldn't do anything to him? He's like, he's just a regular human. I'm, I'm an angel. And what can this dude do to me? Yeah, and I don't think, I think he probably gimped around after it talks about the, the them shrinking the sinew. I, he probably gimped for the rest of his life because of that. He probably has a little bit of a, a little bit of a hobble with his, his walk. And um, it says it shrunk the sinew of it and unless you're you're unless it grows back up you're, you're probably angel use a little too much power that day yeah it's a little something okay so now i think we got it anyone else have anything here on this um no not really i mean we, we don't know if it's michael the archangel but michael is definitely one of the stronger of it, the could, it could be it could be yeah, right? it could we don't be. know a name we don't know a name it's and interesting it, it, the targums actually has a name or, the, or it doesn't right and i mean if jacob didn't know the name i don't know how the targums ended up with the name so it could be it could be michael but well what's, what's it like moses that wrote this could have been like the angel told him which one it was right or, it may, or maybe since it doesn't tell us in this one maybe it told maybe it did tell me so what's your name and he blessed him he didn't say what the name was but it, it may have said it he, yeah he might, he might missing a little bit of conversation may not be recorded everything that's going on Okay, all right, Eli, let's... let's the ironic blessing. Oh, let's do the ironic blessing, Jade. If all you right, will, here's our ironic Get blessing. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Yashrael, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Yashrael, and I will bless them. Okay. All right. So I guess that's it. Um, guys, we love you guys very, very much. We thank you guys very, very much for joining us. We're uh, getting smoked here on our uh, brand new tablet because we, we don't have anything in order here. So Documents. Um, documents are over here. So. That, that was the wrong one. That one didn't Downloads happen. maybe? No, it's just in documents. I just had it. All right. So anyway, guys, that's just us uh, trying to, to get through this. And uh, we're sorry for all the... Uh, proof editing issues on that we're trying to get this right and today's was definitely not right okay guys so um that is it we uh love you guys we thank you guys very very much for hanging out with us anything else in the chat room at all mr no, cole just the drag says that adam was the son of yahuwah yeah. yeah yeah absolutely absolutely okay all right everybody so that's it we love you and have a wonderful week all right shalom
night, everybody. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May he forever shine his light upon you. May you forever seek his ways and may you forever seek his kingdom to come. Much love to you guys. We love you.